if love is CBMI, committed benevolent meta interest, what we find is that the conscience develops naturally because of CBI, CBMI. We know that we love. We know this intuitively. We, we know love. We do love. We, we do it. We engage in the um, creation of it, the generation of it, the, the, um, the, the expression of it, the, the, the delivery of it. And, and as we create love um, of a certain uh, level of, of quality, like high level love, medium level love, low level love in a very general sense, then the opposite of love is we move past indifference into contempt on this continuum. So a little bit of love is going to sponsor, in a sense, a little bit of conscience because we have some awareness that we love and we have some awareness that um, because we love it's it's dictating how we ought to behave to be congruent with that to be consistent with that to be you know genuine and in terms of representing the quality of love that we possess on the inside being manifest in our behavior on the outside between us and that or, or who, whoever it is that we love. So that congruence um, in terms of the fit between what my love says about my relationship to you, my orientation to you, and then out of that sense of the orientation, you know, in this specific moment relative to this specific situation or issue, issue what should my behavior be? So generally, committed benevolent interest means you're going to you're going to follow through. You're going to deliver. There's going to be uh, some measure of uh, dedication or devotion. And there's benevolence. It's going to be of a kind nature. It's going to have your well-being in mind. You know, not not the lovers, the lovee, <laughs> the person I love. I I have a, a, a kind interest in 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 helping that happen, helping your well-being happen, helping helping your happiness happen. I'm certainly doing you no harm kind of thing. And so that's sort of universal. When we intentionally or unintentionally harm somebody we love, we can have a crisis of conscience. If it was, quote, unquote, an accident, we have to be thoroughly convinced it was an accident. You know, otherwise we're going to throw guilt into the gap. And so it is that our conscience, constructed from love, gives us a roadmap for our behavior acceptable, marginal, unacceptable, which then turns almost every decision we make in relation to our loved ones into a moral dilemma of sorts. It's important to understand this. I, I always know what my guilt is trying to tell me. I know what anticipatory guilt is and what it's trying to tell me. I don't run away from guilt. I run toward guilt for all the details so that I can get clearer about what it is I ought to be doing. Now, we can be fuzzy about our guilt because sometimes it's mixed with our fear of a consequence that really has nothing to do with pure guilt. Like, I feel guilty and they're not going to like me, and my real fear is they're not going to like me. And I'm probably a little inured after a lifetime of free-floating guilt, like, okay, there's guilt. But it stops being free-floating when we, when we become aware of the meanings and the subtleties involved. And so CBMI offers us the, the ability to understand ourselves at a much deeper, greater, more specific level and to navigate uh, in the space of our love for, for somebody or something to, uh, to support us in staying true and staying on track and walking that you know, middle path. 
So we know we love, but we're not so sure, uh, we're not that clear about how we should love. And this is where hanging out with our guilt and, and all the other aspects of our, our, the process that we call our conscience inevitably helps us live better and improves the quality of every one of our relationships, including the one with ourselves. And we'll get into that at a future date. It's awfully important too. But that's complicated. We love conscience forms. We pay attention to all matters uh, involving limbic system responses. In particular, we look at uh, guilt. But you know, how am I how am I um, relating to my loved one's fear? How am I relating to my loved one's anger? How am I relating to my loved one's sadness and disgust and guilt, and shame and interest and desire and their joy? And because I love them at a, at a certain level of quality, I'm demanding things of myself because of it. They're not demanding them of me. They may be expecting them, but they're not demanding. Like that's not the issue. Somebody's demanding compliance. That might have nothing to do with my uh, love per se. This is this is the compliance with your own directive to love well. The conscience is is, is the assessment device, the support structure for you to be clear how well you're following through with the love that you actually have. It's not your enemy at all. It, it, it is a useful critic. And, you know, we don't tend to like the critic, but without it, we don't improve in this department without that feedback. So forget that it's that it's painfully critical. See it as supportive of loving better. And when you feel shitty for not loving better, so you should <laughs> at least recognize that you do. And I'm saying wallow in it. But let's log that, meaning I got to improve my love game. It's part of what makes uh, parent guilt so uh, ubiquitous, so universal. <laughs>